In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, controlling the front headlock. This is something that a lot of people have trouble with, especially who pretty much just come from a jiu-jitsu and just a pure submission grappling background. If you come from a wrestling background, this is a lot easier for you because you possibly learned how to technically get a good front headlock on your opponent and really control them. Um, a lot of people who do jiu-jitsu, for some reason, they never really grasp that concept. Now, some people do, right? Some people do grasp that concept because they have a, an instructor that is very good understanding of it and they, uh, and they basically uh, transfer that information over to their students. However, a lot of people don't have good front headlocks. It's just the reality of the situation. And what I mean is, this is a front headlock. Or this is, a, this is where you're, you kind of have a front headlock, where I'm here. This is a front headlock situation where you're in front of the person and you have their head and the arm. It's basically head and arm control. Um, you're gonna have times where you're on your knees, you're gonna have times where you're sprawled out, so on and so forth. Now, most people that I find who do front headlocks they basically just get the head and the arm and they think that they're okay and they have a good front headlock. That's not the case. So if we turn this way, when I get the front headlock on Russ, this is the wrong way of doing it. Where we just come here, we get our grip, we're around the head, we're around the arm and we're just kind of just holding them here. I might even have pressure going upwards, but this still is wrong. The reason being is because I'm not doing anything to actually kill this arm. I need to take this arm out of the equation. If I take this arm out of the equation, it takes out a lot of his movement, it takes out a lot of his escapes, and it also opens up many opportunities for me as well. And when I'm here like this, he has the ability to take his elbow and bring it back to his hip, here, like this, when they, that makes my, my front headlock even weaker. And this opens up things for him as well. If we go back, when I'm here like this and it's nice and loose, it gives him the ability to do certain counters, arm drag type counters on him as well. Also, when I'm here like this, we'll just turn this way, and my arm is weak, it gives him the ability to do sit out type of movements. When in reality, if you have a good front headlock, the person should not be able to sit out on you, especially on that side. Right, because normally a sit out works well when the person has their arms over your body. A sit out should not work well when the person has control of your head. So when we come back here and I get a front headlock on the person, I want to bring their arm inside. And one of the ways for me to do that is I bring my elbow down. Look, I bring my elbow down by their elbow and then I pinch it in here. And now I have a good front headlock. Now at this point, when he goes to do his sit out, he can't because I'm controlling his head. When he goes to do his arm drag on me, he can't because I'm really I'm focusing on tucking his arm inside. I'm really focusing on this. This is this is literally my primary focus at this moment. So he can't do that as well. When he goes to bring his elbow back to his hip, he can't do it. So that simple concept of me basically controlling his arm, I'm 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 pretty much trying to. Um, straight jack his, his arm across his body. By doing that simple idea, it takes away all these escapes, all these options that he can do, right? And it's, it's, it's really, it's not that hard to do, honestly. Now, ideally, when I get the front headlock, boom, I wanna get this right away. Here, I wanna get this immediately, because that way it's gonna work for me. Or a lot of times I'll, I'll get all the way across, and I'll, I'll be able to let go of this now. Here, or I'll just cover, because now I got my arm, his arm so far across that I'm able to grab his um, tricep here. Now when he goes to do these things, it becomes much harder for him to do that, because I'm grabbing his tricep. This also gives me the ability to start working my anacondas on him and start working my submissions. Now be careful here, right, because if I do do this and I don't really focus on control, he's gonna lose, I'm gonna, uh, he's gonna be able to get his head out, right? That's why lots of times I still cover and I keep pressure down with the head, because now when he goes to do that again, it becomes much harder for him to do it. That's a more advanced type of situation. But to start out, we keep our hands clamped together, right? Lots of times I'll do this here. I'll grab like this when I get the front headlock. You know, some people do get a gable grip type of position. Mm -hmm. I tend to find that I get this more often than not. It's a little bit quicker for me. And the other reason why I like to do this is because one of the best uh, ways for him to get out of the front headlock is by grabbing my wrist and planting it to the mat, right? So when I'm here like this, if I don't cover this well and he plants my hand to the mat, he can now back up easily. However, if I'm back, right, and I do cover this well, now when he goes to plant my hand to the mat, it becomes much harder for him to plant my hand to the mat here because I'm now covering my fist 
and it becomes harder for him to do that escape, all right? That's just so, and you're also learning ways for him to possibly to escape on you. But the biggest thing that people mess up on is they do not control this arm, right? You gotta, you gotta basically straight jacket their arm. It's very important. And um, if you get the front head locked like this initially and you forget to do it, you know, it's, it becomes harder to do it right away. So if I just try to bring his arm in like this, I can't. That's why I bring my arm down by his elbow. Because now when I bring my arm down by his elbow, I can then bring his arm inside because it's a leverage point. Watch the leverage um, videos on the grappler's guide. Like this is, this is going on repeat for this particular series. Here, go down by the elbow and then drive in. Because now I have very good control of him. And this also opens up, look, look at his side here. This opens things up for me to now work my good top turtle positions on him. Also, the front headlock works submissions for me. I can get um, anacondas on him. I can start working guillotines on him. Um, another a strong submission is where I'm here like this, right? I go here, boom, and I'm pretty much doing an arm and guillotine with his arm across. Here, it's not just a regular arm and guillotine. His arm is literally across my body. And if it doesn't work, you can start working to, towards the back. And all that is happening, all that is um, given to me because of the fact that I'm getting good arm position on him. That's, I'm gonna, that's the, one of the number one things that people do not do when it comes to the front headlock. They don't suck that arm inside. Sucking that arm inside really, really controls your position. And as you're sucking the arm inside, here, right? You're coming here, we wanna, we wanna pinch everything together. I don't just go like this and just flare this elbow out. Because if I flare this elbow out, I'm still giving him escapes. We wanna control the side of the head. What I mean is, Right? Don't suck the arm in and then make your other arm lazy. So if I suck the arm in and I make my right arm lazy, he now has the ability to start possibly working to get out. Um, I don't want to do, I want everything sucked in. I want everything pinched in here. Because now when he goes to get out, it's much harder. Here, I can drive his head down to the mat. If I lose it and he brings his elbow back, I go back down to his elbow and I suck it back in. What I mean is there's going to be times where you do certain things. I might have his arm across, right? He might attempt to do a sit out and it doesn't work. Boom, I might snap him down. So look, now his elbow's out again, I'll bring it back in. See, I went back down to his elbow, I dropped it down to the mat, and I sucked it back in, here. That way, I can still keep control of him. Now, so focus on these things, because they're gonna help you out a lot. It's a really, it's a simple tweak. If you're, if you're somebody has a, a weak front headlock, more often than not, it's because you're not doing these things and you're doing the, the bad things that uh, you shouldn't be doing. You know, I cheated a little bit. I came from uh, um, a small wrestling background, so I was able to practice front headlocks a little bit more. But that's really not an excuse in my opinion. People should be, uh, they should understand how to do front headlocks. And they should understand how to do wrestling movements when you're doing jujitsu. It's all grappling, right? It's all wrestling. So if you want to learn how to be a good, uh, you know, good grappler, even better grappler, if you want to learn how to really control your opponent, if you want to learn how to be even better at scrambles, don't just study jujitsu, don't just study ju judo, also study wrestling and all those different things. It's all related, all right? Um, and we're going to put it together. So try these things out. If you have any questions or comments, post below, and I'll do the best I can to help you out. All right, peace.